Karen Bryan here for MMA Heat, talking with Mike Chiesa, who is taking on the former champ, Rafael Dos Anjos, at UFC Rally. Michael, it's the first fight of the year for you. I'm fired up about this matchup. I think it's going to be awesome. What did you think uh, when the opportunity to fight RDA actually finally came to you? Um, I was really excited. Um, you know, first and foremost, I got a lot of respect for the guy. Um, I got a lot of respect for what he's done for the sport. Um, I got a lot of respect for his coach, Jason Perillo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, those are those are the things that, that excite me. You know, it's like this is going to be a fun fight. It's going to be a really competitive fight. Um, hands down. I mean, every guy says the same thing every time. This is the toughest fight of my career. But, right, I mean, right. on paper, if you look at it, this this really is. I mean, this guy, you know, he, he's at the top of the heap at 170. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a great opportunity. To my understanding, you know, this was – he asked for this fight. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's in a position where he can kind of ask for his fights. He's a former champion. He's fought everybody at 170. Yep. Um, you know, so I don't know. Maybe he thinks I'm an easy matchup. Maybe it's because I have somewhat of a name value, and I'm really starting to make some waves in this weight class, even though I'm not ranked. But either way, I'm just really excited for the opportunity to compete against him. Well, it is great. Actually, two things. I want you to tilt your camera down a little so we can see your fabulous oh, beard is getting cut off. There we go. There we go. There. Very nice. Um, yeah, that's much better. Well, yeah, so I actually yeah, talked to back. Rafael earlier today. And um, it wasn't about – it's not that he thinks you're easy fight at all. It's not about that. It literally was that. Um, yeah. at the top of the rankings you know he's fought a lot of those people already so some of those were going to be rematches yeah. some of the people are tied up and then you know like I think Ponzinibbio's name came up he's like well but he was going to be matched up with somebody else you know he's already fought Usman Kamaru all these things so really what it came to uh he was saying was basically somebody who was available and then also somebody that yeah he knew was going to be a good fight so I think you're definitely that um that said you, you certainly have a lot to gain from this, right? So you joke about it being the biggest fight of your life, but do you see it that way? No, no, I, I don't really just see it that way. I feel it that way, yeah. you know what I mean? And I know Rafael's a smart guy, yeah. you know what I mean? So, you know, I would like to think that he's not looking at me as an easy fight. No, he's definitely like not. There are, there are guys that have, that have asked for a fight against me thinking it's an easy matchup, and it really hasn't gone well for him. Um, and he's a smart guy, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is a big test for me. You know what I mean? I, I aspire to be a world champion. I truly believe deep down in my guts that I have what it takes to become a champion. And this is this is a great measuring stick to see where I'm at. You know what I mean? And it's not it's not just about whether I win or lose this fight. It's about how I perform. You know what I mean? Like it's even I could go out and perform crummy and still win and not sell people on it. And I could go out and fight my butt off and still come up short and still sell people on the fact that you know I have what it takes to be a champion. So really. It's not just about winning and losing. Winning is everything, but it's just about performing well. Like, I need to just go out and put on a good performance and, you know, they got a tall order ahead of me, and I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, how do you feel about your last couple performances then? Because you're coming off a couple of back-to-back -back wins, um, and so, you know, you're getting used to your body at 170. How, how do you feel about how you've been performing uh, and what you have sort of momentum-wise going into this fight? Oh, I performance wise I, I mean I couldn't be I mean I, I was a little disappointed that I didn't finish Diego yeah. and that was that was probably the first time in my life that I was I didn't game plan to go to a decision yeah. but I was kind of like I gave the guy his respect like he's very resilient right. you know what I mean and the last thing I want to do is this guy is going to thrive off of me not not necessarily making mistakes but he's going to thrive off of me going for something yeah and not getting it, and that's when he comes back to life. So I didn't game plan for a decision, but I was definitely like, I gave him a lot of respect yeah. in that sense. Um, you know, so I was a little bummed I didn't finish him, but either way, I mean, two wins in a row, yeah. you know, in, in a very stacked division. And the one thing that I love so much about 170 is I liked being at 155 because it is the toughest weight yeah, class in great. the UFC. And moving up to 170, it's the talent's just the same you know what i mean so i'm happy that i'm still in a very competitive weight class with like the best guys and i got good momentum going into a fight like this my confidence is really high and i'd be a liar if i said that i, I mean going two losses in a row and kind of going through that tough year 2018 mm -hmm. you know i started to kind of question like you know how much longer am i going to do this you know these weight cuts are killing me i'm not having the i used to enjoy fight week so much and now i'm like dreading it yeah and this just gave me second life like now now I'm like, and I'm training better and harder than I ever have. And he probably feels the same way. Yeah. Like I know Rafael, he had a lot of tough weight cuts and he got a second breath of life going up to 170. So you got two guys that are fighting in the right weight class 
you know, and I got the momentum behind me to really go out there and, and not, not just, uh, it's just like a confidence thing. You have more confidence when you got the wins under your belt. So I got the confidence for sure to go out and beat this guy. Well, it's funny too, because, you know, I work with Woodley a lot and, uh, that was one of the jo- running jokes is we would always say that 155 was better than 170 just to get a rise out of him. You know what I mean? But, but you're right. Those are the two <laughs> shark tank divisions for absolute sure. Those are the two, uh, you know, most talent packed stacked, no easy fights there. But I actually asked Rafael this question and I'm curious for you as well. You know, you both are former lightweight. So how do you think this fight potentially could play out differently with you guys at 70 or uh, 170 instead of 155? We're going to be able to push a harder pace. You yeah. know what I mean? When I when I was fighting at 55, those last few fights, you just go, you know, you're just like from the weight cut. And for me, in my mind, I was like, I'm just going to go push the pedal to the floor yeah. and just see what happens. You know what I mean? Whereas now it's like, we're both, we both feel good. We're nourished. Yeah. You know, we have good camps. Like, people don't realize how hard a training camp is when you have to cut 40 pounds. You know what I mean? It's like you really, it takes away from your skills. You're like, you don't really focus on getting better. You're just focused on like, Hey, I want to go live so I can lose some weight. And then I'm going to go run after this. Whereas now it's like my weight's coming off by just focusing on my techniques and doing a lot of skill training. And I'm able to push my sparring stuff a lot harder. So you just get, you're getting two guys that are nourished that are going to be able to push more. And you get two guys on that same level. It's just going to make for fireworks. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a fun fight for the fans. It's going to be a fun fight for me and him. And, you know, I'm just really looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. No, I think I think it's going to be great. Um, I'm very excited for it. Now, you say you're in Idaho right now. Um, so, you know, it seems like lately you've done a little more sampling of some other training partners and things like that. Is that a fair assessment? Um, not necessarily. Um, you know, I home base is always Spokane. I have a tough team. You know, I'm always training with my staple guys. Yeah. Um, and you know, I spend my time in Las Vegas. I work extensively with both Sandoval. I still get my time in with John Wood. Yeah. Um, but I came down to Boise because, uh, my teammate, Tyler McGuire, who fought for the one FC title, uh-huh. uh, 2018, he fought for the title in one FC. Uh, he's an active air force guy. And so he got stationed, he got, he got moved to Arizona, but right. he's here in Boise to do some, some air force training for mm-hmm. a few weeks. And he's a perfect partner for me. He's got nice. the, he's got good big build he's a he's a well-sized welterweight and so i figured i'd come out here to get some training with him and you know it's been sweet we got like our own private facility with this cool. with this uh, everybody i didn't know that this was this guy russell brunson is we've been training at his house he has like his own home gym and yeah. apparently like he's a really big deal like i told one of my buddies back home like yeah we're training at this guy russell brunson's gym he's like no you're not <laughs> russell brunson and he's like he's like a big time uh like does like online advertising and I, so I look him up on Instagram, okay. he's like 600,000 600, followers. I'm like, holy crap, this guy's legit. But yeah, so he's got like this really nice home facility. It's like private. So we've been doing like our own training sessions with just our guys. Um, you know, I got some sparring in with some different bodies at SBG Idaho. So, you know, I'm definitely getting some different looks, but I'm with my core guys. You know, my, my head coach, Rick Little, is like my ride or die. I mean, this guy, he his life is MMA. Yeah. He goes with me everywhere I go to train. He's right by my side. So it's like, you know, we, we, we're finishing camp proper. I'm with my guys and, and I'm in a good place. Nice. I love to hear it. And I, I love to hear it. And that was, yeah, I mean, I you have been loyal to them for such a long time. And, it, you know, it's always one of those things, right, where people... People say sometimes to people like, oh, you know, there's a thing with loyalty. It's great, but it doesn't get you, you know, so far. Like sometimes the people don't evolve with you, but you've been here. I mean, those, that, that's your crew from the ultimate fighter. That's your crew from everything. Um, so how do you think, though, like your 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 what you're living right now is how does that compare to what you imagined it would be right because when you were on the ultimate fighter you have all these imaginations of like what the career in the ufc is going to be like and this and that and i'm going to hit this milestone at this age like how how close to your plan uh are you these days i'm close you know what i mean i always knew um i always knew i'd get to the ufc yeah you know, in my mind coming up, but I just, when it's finally happening, it's surreal. I mean, and it's still surreal to this day. I mean, it's crazy to think for me, I've been in the promotion for, it'll be eight years this March. And it's like, that's the one thing that I still can't wrap my head around. It's like, yeah, I knew I was going to be in the UFC someday, but I didn't think that, you know, the idea I've been here for eight years, I'm still going strong. It's like, that's, that's the one thing I can't wrap my head around. And I think that's a really good thing because it shows that, I still have a lot of, of appreciation for where I'm at 
and what I've what I've gotten myself, the point I've gotten myself to in the, in my career. So, um, you know, it's still surreal to me to this day. And I think when the day comes that I get used to it and I don't get the nerves for these fights and it just doesn't excite me like it does, then I should probably be done. But still to this day, I'm just as giddy about being in the UFC as I was when I was 24, <laughs> just getting into the Ultimate Fighter. So, uh, I think that's a real it's a really good thing. I, no, it's a great thing, and I remember, I remember that media day when they let all you guys out. Like it was like you hadn't even seen the sun. And you're like, oh my god, people, food. Like it was so. I, I very, very, very vividly remember that. Um, really good. Karen, you were the, you were the first girl I saw in three months. <laughs> It's like, well, hello. Well, I, I never like, felt hello. so great hello, about myself. Um, oh, the smell yeah, of a no, woman was just so great. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really fun. And it, it's crazy because, believe me, the way you feel about it, too, is the way I feel. I'm like, how was that eight years ago? Like, how was that already eight years ago? Which is which is really crazy. Um, it's nuts. So you have obviously done a lot in your fighting career, but you have you've talked a little bit about trying to do some commentary, getting behind the, you know on the other side, getting behind the mic and everything like that. So is that something you still want to do? You know, like what what's your take on on what you? Not that you're going to transition out of fighting anytime soon, because obviously our guys are actively fighting and at the desk with us. But like, what is your goal with that? Oh yeah, my goal is still I still want to get behind the desk. Yeah. You know, I'm still I'm such. I can't help but be a nerd about this sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I pay close attention to it, and I, I feel like I always have something to say. Um, and I've shown, you know, I've shown to the right people that I have the knowledge. I'm, I'm, don't look like a bum anymore. No, you look great. You never look like a bum. You got a nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've shown that I have the knowledge. You know, I, I was working with, uh, I was doing a fight pass show over the summer. I was doing on the line with Yanni the Greek. Right. And that was going, that was going really good. They just trans, they, they kind of phased me out because they wanted to do just two professional sports betters instead of like the fighter versus sports better. Yeah. But I, every time I show, uh, every time I come out, I'm showing that I, I have the capability to do it. But I think the best way to submit your spot into those types of opportunities is winning fights. So I just need to focus on winning and those opportunities will pre present themselves. But 2020, I, I kind of think I'm not a big like New Year's resolution guy, but I'm like I like to start a new year and come up with some ideas of like what I want to do and I, what I want to start this year in 2020 is I want to start a passion project. I'm always so focused on like residual income and doing these yeah. things that are like so logical. But I'm, I'm like, you know what? I need to do something that I'm passionate about. And and I think that this year I'm going to start a podcast because that's I always have something to say. And yeah. when news breaks, I'm like, oh, I have something to say. I just don't have a platform to say it. And it's, yeah. no one else is saying it. And it's not like some hoopla. Like I'm a knowledgeable guy. Yeah. I say that humbly. But it's like I want to start a podcast just so I can have my voice be heard a little bit. Right. Even if I only get 10 people listening, at least I'll be able to get these things off my chest. And, and also it's another opportunity to show that like I have good knowledge of the sport. Yeah. I deserve to be behind a desk on some type of platform. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a great idea. And I, you know, I would love working with you at, at some point. I think that would be really fun if you could join us up at the desk. Um, you know, I'm, I am curious then. So I'll put on your, your uh, analyst hat then. You're in the welterweight yeah. division. There's a big welterweight fight oh, yeah. this weekend. A guy named Connor, a guy named Cowboy. <laughs> um, I'm wondering what your take is on that fight. You know, this is a really tricky fight to call because, you know, I think first and foremost, people are hard on Cowboy. I yeah. mean, people are like, oh, he's lost his last two. Um, you know, and, and especially that last one to Gaethje, he yeah. kind of got, you know, he got put out pretty quick, but people are quick to forget that Connor hasn't won a fight since 2016. You minute. know what I mean? So this is a guy, Cowboys racked up, you know, at least three, four or five wins since Connor's gotten his last one win. Right. So it's like, you got to take that into consideration that this is a, a, this is the fight that makes sense because both guys are on some, some type of skid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's really going to be – it's going to boil down to which Cowboy shows up. You know, because I think Connor, he's well-prepared. He seems really focused. He seems like he's in the right mental space. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe it. I'm a believer. I've, I've been watching the press conferences, the countdown shows, all that. I'm a, I believe that Connor is back. But just because he's back doesn't mean that Cowboy can't beat him. If Cowboy – if Cowboy, bad motherfucking Cerrone, pardon my language. Yeah, if he right. shows up, he can beat him. You know what I mean? And from, from, a, from like a tactical standpoint – Cowboy has struggled against Southpaws, right. but I think he could succeed in this match. Acknowledging his flaws and his shortcomings against guys from that stance, I think if he lets that right kick fly a lot into that open left side of Connor, I mean, I think he could find a lot of success. Yep. But really, it just boils down to which Cowboy shows up. And I'm pulling for Cowboy. That's my buddy. 
I believe he's capable of achieving great things in the sport, and uh, I'm just really looking forward to it. I love it. Well, that's a great assessment, and I agree. Like, it's it's funny because it is an interesting fight. Right? I feel like you could argue that fight either way for both guys. You know, just sort of depending on what. Uh, um, so we'll all, we, we, of course, we'll see what happens when all is revealed. So, okay. So if you do make it past Rafael, who is a former champion, um, I know it's the beginning of the year, it's January, a lot of opportunity for you to be active this year. So do you have, um, a hit list? You know, we used to do a thing on UFC tonight, sort of like path to gold, the road to gold, uh, where we would like map out three fights for somebody to get them to a title shot. So do you, do you do that? Are you that hardcore of like a game player? Like after Rafael, then I want this name and then that name and then that. I always have one guy in mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I, I do have one in the back of my mind, but I'm going to keep that card okay. close to my chest because I'm the type of guy that, A, I like to save that for the post-fight speech. I, I, there's one thing that fighters do not capitalize on enough is you can literally almost get any fight you want if you ask for it on the mic after you win. Thank you. Please, <laughs> for the people in the cheap true. seats in the back. Have a name yes. in your mouth for when you have the mic. <laughs> yeah, and just don't – don't. I'm never looking past my opponents, but it's like when I beat Jim Miller, yeah. I ask – and you have to be logical. You can't just – you know, if I beat RDA, I'm not going to go, hey, I want to fight Daniel Cormier. Right. Oh, that doesn't make sense. And I would never want to fight Daniel no, Cormier. No, 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 no. But – but you have if you're if you're a smart person and you have a good grasp on your division and yeah. what makes sense, you can get what you want. Right. When I beat Jim Miller, I asked for Benil Dariush. Yeah. I got Benil Dariush. When I beat Benil, I asked for Tony Ferguson. Yeah. I got Tony Ferguson. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. if you have a logical opponent in mind, you're gonna do Sean's job for him, and right. they actually appreciate that. Like, oh, cool, thanks. That makes sense. Let's make it happen. So I have someone in the back of my mind. But I'm, I'm keeping my cards close to my chest because I'm going to say it when it counts. All right. Well, I love it. And I, lo- I love that you, you're you already aware of that. Like, it, uh, believe me, it drives us crazy when we see yeah. somebody, oh, whoever they give me, no, no, don't say whoever. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Yeah, I get, it I get, I get the, I know what you're saying. Like, certain people, you know, I get that you're like, oh, I'll just here to like fight everybody they put in front of me. But I, I, I like that you have a plan. Um, so when you visualize this fight, then do you have a, a like a prediction for how it would end, or ideally, like is there a certain way you would like to beat Rafael? Um, no, I just want to get my hand raised, yeah. you know. And I, I know I'm very aware that I'm gonna have to walk through the fire to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Like I know what he's capable of. I know that he's a very well-rounded, dangerous guy, and I just know I'm gonna have to walk through the fire to beat him. So I don't care, you know. I don't care if I'm down to love and I go got to go out for the sprint round three. I don't care if I'm pitching a shutout. It doesn't matter. I just know I got to walk through the fire, but I believe I can get my hand raised. Nice. And question for you, you know, because he is respectful. Do you like when people sort of poke the bear a little bit more? You know what I mean? Do you like when people smack talk you? It doesn't really matter because honestly, I'm I'm so phased out from that. Yeah. I'm I'm literally I am zero and two since trying that bullshit. I'm not. I'm just not that guy. So you know, I started. You know, in that it's it. it, it I am very aware in this sport that it is the animosity and the trash yeah. talk and those types of things are what build up fights and that, that can propel your career. Right. Um, you know, but I'm Owen two since I've done that, did it with Kevin and granted I got fucked. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not like I lost fair and square. I got shafted and then with Pettis, you know what I mean? And actually Pettis, the Pettis fight was the biggest reality check of my entire life. That's when I realized like, this is just not who I am. Yeah. And I'd rather be true to myself and true to my people than be somebody I'm not just to try to get a bigger fight. Yeah. I feel like it's almost karma. I feel like it's like the universe is telling me you're not meant to try to be an asshole and talk shit. I think you're just meant to be who you are. So even if I get matched up with a guy that's a loud mouth and is going to banter me, I'm just going to stay in my lane and I'm just going to be who I am. And you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be somebody I'm not just to try to sell a fight. I'm going to stay true to myself. And unfortunately, you know, I have a good grasp on some things I do that are right, like the post fight speech, yeah. but I, I know it's good to promote fights and people like the trash talk and the animosity, but I'm, I'm not going back to that. I'm going to be true to myself and I'm going to get the fights I want by winning. Well, I like to hear that because I think you're a sweetheart and, uh, you know, <laughs> like I like when there's a good dude, you know, so, so yeah. we appreciate it. Um, listen, I, I, I do want to do no wrong answers with you if you have a couple more uh, yep. minutes to ask you some random questions. Um, but, yep. but first and foremost, thank you for your time today and, uh, and best of luck Absolutely. in the fight against Rafael. Thank you.